Today, the beast is coming. A big, beautiful, chrome beast. And we'll take her for a spin. We'll also show you a hot sports car. And some gasoline memorabilia. All that and more coming up next on World of Collector Cars. World of Collector Cars is made possible in part by... Introducing the new Exide Orbital Maintenance-Free Battery. The Exide Orbital has been dropped, dragged, and drilled to prove it's tough enough for anything and perfect for your collector car. The new Exide Orbital Battery. Kimberly Clark, makers of NOAA and now new Dustop Softest Flannel Fabric. Dustop is the newest fabric from Kimberly Clark featuring incredible softness and breathability, plus four layers of protection for your pride and joy. NOAA and new Dustop Car Covers from Kimberly Clark. Rare parts of Stockton, California. Rare parts supply suspension parts for all vehicles from 1930 to current year models. Specializing in collector car suspension and small run manufacturing. Rare parts available through jobbers and repair and restoration shops across the country. The world of collector cars is funded in part by Steel Rubber Products. Steel Rubber Products, manufacturing weather stripping and molded rubber parts for Chrysler Corporation, Packard, Independence, and General Motors Cars and Trucks. Steel Rubber Products, making parts for fellow hobbyists for nearly 30 years. We admit we've always had a fondness for lots of chrome. Somebody once said that uh, 1958 was the year of excess, and uh, when you look at some of the 58 cars, uh, you see all the, the chrome and the stainless. It, it truly was, wasn't it? That's correct. I, there is a, I went to a show where a fellow made the statement that this 1958 Buick had more ounces of chrome than any car in the history of cars made in the United States. I don't know how true that is, but he did make the statement. He seemed to be pretty well versed on Buicks. Well, let's tell the folks exactly what, what model uh, this 58 uh, Buick is. It's a 1958 Riviera Estate Wagon Caballero. There were approximately 4,200 of them made in 1958, uh, which constitutes a bad year. They made uh, 10,000 of them in 57. So that gives you a pretty good idea how bad the car business was in 1958. Explain the designation of the Caballero and the Riviera. Uh, the Riviera stands for the no post in the uh, between the front and rear door, and the Caballero is just a kind of a name that uh, GMC and Buick hung on to. They later put it on the, the GMC uh, El, or type of El Camino. Well, this car certainly wasn't in this good a shape when you got it. I, no, you were it showing was, me pictures. It was uh, it was not a basket case. All the parts and pieces were there and still together, but it. It spent about uh, 24 years in a peach orchard, so it was in pretty rough shape when I got it. And you took it down clear to uh, bare metal, right? Right, bare metal, and uh, right down to the frame, had it sandblasted, and brought it back up from there. Really an interesting car, and I guess the main distinction on, besides all the chrome and everything, and this particular thing is what you were talking about, is the, the no pillar in between. Most station wagons, uh, let's face it, had a, had a pillar in right. between. Oldsmobile and Buick were the only ones that ever made a station wagon that didn't have the, a four-door station wagon that didn't have a pillar in them, and they only made them for two years. That was 57 and 58. Well, tell us a little, a few of the other things about this car. Maybe since we're sitting here in it, maybe we can start with this, uh, this uh, interior. A lot of chrome in here, too. It's almost blinding. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it was. It was, uh, everything in, inside here was, uh, Kind of humidity had gotten to it, and everything had to be rechromed that was inside the car. But everything that you see here was original. The, the speedometer had to be redone, and all the gauges were, were redone. I sent those back east, including the clock. Uh, there's a lot of there's a lot to restoring uh, one of these older cars like this. You have to go to specialty houses to to get the the little detail things done and done correctly. Now, this had to be one of the uh, first years for padded dash. It must have been an option that year. It was an option. Uh, I think it was it was a standard uh, feature on the Caballero and, and Centuries, but on the uh, Special Models, it was an option. 
in a top of the line car, this one's got all the extra goodies that came with it. Besides air conditioning, I would imagine it's got the uh, the automatic uh, what they call the um, the dimmer. No, it doesn't. Ha didn't have the dimmer. It had a uh, uh, sentry on the speedometer. You could set your speedometer at a certain speed, and it, and it still works. That if you want, didn't want to exceed 70 miles an hour, you set it at 70, and it would a buzzer would go off and uh, alert you that you were getting a little lead footed, so so to speak. I know yours is set at 105. <laughs> Well, this this is a cruiser. It's got uh, 300 horsepower. It was uh, factory 300 horsepower in 1958, and uh, had a big old Rochester carburetor on it, and uh, no smog in, th in it. Uh, nine to have one to one compression ratio, and it uh, develops. It's uh, ironic for, for most cars. It develops its 300 horsepower at 3,800 RPMs. It doesn't have to wind very high to to get that kind of horsepower. So it'll push you back in the seat. This for the uh, the country club set back in the 50s that wanted to take the kids maybe and, and a lot of luggage and go on a cross-country trip, right? Yes, it did. The first uh, pictures I took of it, I used the, uh, the golf course as a, and the clubhouse as a background because I, I figured that's where it belonged and that's where you saw them most of the time. Looking in the back here, it not only would hold three kids comfortably it would be it would hold three adults comfortably and i would imagine this whole thing sits down so if you want to haul a lot of luggage you yes. could yeah it'll uh when it's laid the seats are laid down you can put an eight foot sheet of plywood in there very, very easily uh it's uh, all the, like i said all the parts and pieces were were here uh they were there was a lot of de-rusting had to go on and uh, uh i was just i couldn't believe the job that, that the guy did on the upholstery when it was all finished i was really pleased with it on the rear of the car, there's uh, an amazing amount of uh, chrome, and, and, and actually, I guess it's polished stainless back there. Yeah, mostly, mostly chrome. The bumper is is in 15 pieces, not including any nuts or bolts. There's not many different pieces to that bumper, because when you take them to the chrome shop, they do, they want everything disassembled. So it, it there's a lot of parts and pieces to it. And the tailgate it goes down in uh, two sections. Actually, it has yeah. two 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 sections, and there's. There's only one piece of wood in this whole car, and it came out from the factory, and that's in the bottom top part of the bottom of the tailgate, and I guess it's there to keep the metal from crushing when they haul things and leave the tailgate up, but it was kind of unique to find a piece of wood in a, in a car this day and age. This car weighs approximately how many, how many pounds? Uh, I weighed it the first time I took it out. It was 4,375 pounds. The factory says it's supposed to weigh uh, 4,125, so I put another 250 pounds of paint and dum-dum in it, I guess. <laughs> so extra wide white walls that did it. Yeah. Engine-wise, you said it was a 360? 364 nail head. They call it a nail head because the, the valves in this car are perfectly up and down, which is contrary to most cars. They're at an angle of the same as the V8, but the nail head is kind of a unique situation that they are straight up and down, and they develop a tremendous amount of torque. And they have the, the, there are dome pistons in them also, so that's how they get that nine and a half to one compression ratio, which is unheard of today uh, in, in a standard car. Whatever they keep it down to less than eight, I think, or eight and a half. But uh, there's a lot to it. The car uh, wants to idle very smooth, and uh, uh, I, when I had it rebuilt, I talked to a guy about about uh, balancing it, and he says, uh, "You don't have to balance a Buick." He says they they don't run that many RPMs and and they're balanced good enough in the factory you don't have to mess with them. And it's very true. It, uh, it'll idle at 600 RPMs with no problem at all. Now, today's gasoline, you have any problems with it? No, I put uh, hard valve seats in and, and fix it so it's, it can burn any kind of fuel these days. Uh, the amount of time I had it down, the amount of money I spent, it, didn't, it, wasn't, it was foolish not to, not to go through that portion of it. And you're probably getting about, what, 13, 14 uh, miles a gallon? 13 to 15, and if I get in the hills and get on it, I can bring it down to 11 if, if I'm not careful. But for the most part, on level ground or in the valley, you want to have you 15 miles an hour is not uncommon. Yeah. I mean, 15 miles a gallon. Now, the engine compartment is completely stock. Uh, I went to great pains to keep it stock. Uh, the only thing that I did do that it wasn't originally, I do have a PCV valve on it to kind of keep, keep the air clean and, and uh, do my part for for air pollution. Also, one thing I want to mention up front here, uh, it's got the, the neat grill on it, which I, I don't know if there's a, a term for that particular type of grill. I guess kind of like an egg egg carton or 
grill? Uh, Buick refers to it as a Starlight grill uh, in their sales brochure, and uh, they did this also to uh, help the cooling in the system. You got a wide open; there's no obstruction straight to the radiator to uh, to divert the uh, fresh air from coming in. So that's one of their advertising uh, gimmicks. But I know the uh, in the early years of this car, a lot of a lot of these grills went through for street rods. A lot of people liked them; they were as popular as the as the old uh, DeSoto grills uh, because of they could. There were so many things they could do with them. And now, therefore, it makes them hard to find now, and they're expensive. Also up front is the uh, the little, uh, I guess you call them gun sights on the uh, fenders. I think I think that's the terminology of gun sights or bullseyes, but uh, that's uh, your terminology is probably more correct than mine. But yes, that's uh, that was one of the first times they came out with them uh, was in '58, and I think that was the last time. So yeah. they did they made a lot of changes in '58 to '59, thinking that the car didn't sell for a reason when it didn't sell is because there wasn't much money around then. So. Yeah. And the V, uh, was there a purpose for the V? Was it because of the V8? Yes, they call this uh, the, some, and one, another one of the sales brochures I saw, I took, I bought a video from, about the sales brochure, and they referred to this engine as the B-52. And some strange reason it developed uh, 5,200 pounds of thrust at certain RPM, so they kind of nicknamed the engine the B-52. So, and that's that kind of goes along with the with the bomb-looking uh, stainless on the on the back doors. So those were all kind of went in, coincide. But other than this video that I bought just to show in the sales promotion, that's the only time it was ever mentioned. Now the color on this Don is probably not a factory original color, but it's uh, probably close, and maybe with a little more metal flake added. That's correct. It's uh, the original color was called Sylvan Gray, and I, I, when I do a comparison with old pictures, it looks like it's got a little more metal flake in it. It's a, it's a beautiful color. I like the uh, the combination. I'm, I'm very pleased with the color and the paint on it. And I also notice you got the uh, the travel rack on top. That was that an option that year? That or? was a that was a factory. Uh, it was a factory option, dealer added. So, got the wide whites on it. How how do those ride? Are those steel belted wide whites or are those? Yeah, uh, the they're, they're steel belted radials. They they they're terrific. Yeah, they don't have any uh, square spots in them, and they really corner nice and really a comfortable ride. Yeah, we're noticing a lot of people that are we're riding the old uh, nylon and, uh, and rayon uh, wide whites are changing over to the steel belt wide yeah. whites. Yeah, well, they just started making the, the wide white wall tires uh, this year in the radio. They never. They hadn't perfected them yet because of the white one, I guess. And this color is the original color of all Buicks in 1958. It was called Seminole Red. Well, it's an absolutely gorgeous car, and it's the first one I've seen up close, uh, not in a magazine. And uh, I really appreciate you bringing it out today, Don. Thank you very much. Thank you. My pleasure to show it to you. If you like Lotus 7s and Caterhams, you're going to love this next car. It's called a Westfield, and in America, Bob Yarwood is the guy to talk to about them. We got to visit with him one sunny afternoon at Thunder Hill Race Park. Well, Bob, we're here at Thunder Hill, and uh, these cars are absolutely gorgeous, and you were telling me that, uh, well, we'll get into the history of the cars in just a minute, but tell me a little bit about your background. You're originally from England, right? That's right. I'm, uh, I'm from Cheshire in England, which is a quite near where the Beatles came from, um, Manchester, South Manchester area, and um, I worked over there as a designer, um, moved over here in 1980, and started a car business in Central California. We're now the importer for the Westfield for North America, and these are two examples that we have. Now your background is uh, in cars, though. You were telling me earlier that uh, you had worked for Rolls-Royce for a while. Yeah, I worked for Rolls-Royce uh, on contract uh, when they were doing the uh, aircraft engine, the RB211 engine, which was a hugely successful engine for aircraft. And we worked on that. I, my specific project was the fan thrust reverser 
part of it that of course makes it break when you go down the runway, which is quite important. Um, and so I did that for a while, but my love was always cars and racing cars, and, and I still race today, or try to. And so um, really this is just an overgrown hobby, it's very nice. Well, it's nice to be able to make a living out of it too. That's and right. These cars are, uh, there are a lot of similarities uh, between these and the, the Lotus 7s. Can you tell me the relationship there? Well, these are, you know, these are obviously a look-alike. Um, in fact, uh, years ago when Westfield started producing cars in 1982, um, they made a car which was their first go at making a Lotus 7 was so similar to the then Lotus 7 Series 2 that Caterham, who were officially building the Lotus 7 under license, didn't like the fact that Westfield were making a car so similar and instigated litigation against it. And so Westfield had to redesign the car based on that litigation. And that's why the cars now have a fiberglass sheeting uh, or covering rather than exposed aluminum like the, uh, like the real cars did have. But they, they've made them longer and wider to accept folks like ourselves who are over six foot and of generous proportion. And so we can fit in them comfortably now, whereas a Caterham um, and a real Lotus 7, if you're six foot, you are really struggling to sit in the car. And so these are more user friendly, and of course they've come along in uh, all the modern improvement areas, such as braking and suspension and that type of thing. Our cameraman who is over six foot, uh, about six six, two hundred and sixty five pounds, he, uh, he was in a Caterham, he knows how that is. It, it, re it really would have been difficult for him. He would have to breathe in a lot. Yeah. <laughs> but these are these are quite comfortable. I'm uh, six one, about two twenty, and uh, I fit in here uh, quite comfortably. Yeah, I'm six two, and I weigh about uh, oh two fifteen at the moment. I went on a diet a little while ago to drive my race car, so um, I can get in them. And in fact, to drive this properly, I have to have the seat one click forward, and it has a movable pedal box as well. You can bring the pedal box away from you or towards you. And so that really helps with short legs or long legs, and it's a mechanical adjustment, but you can do it very easily. And so all these extra little creature comforts are very nice. Okay, well, the one we're setting in here is the, um, the four-cylinder version. Now, does it have a model uh, name or number? Well, uh, we, we call it the SPA, and that, that comes from the parent company in Britain. That's what their designation is for the car. Um, and it has, in this particular car, we only produce this car in two forms, actually. We produce it at two power levels. Uh, we produce it at a basic power level of 115 horsepower using the old Ford Cortina engine, um, 65 vintage engine. We completely go through the motors from square one. We absolutely rebore everything and use new pistons and camshafts and lifters and chains and wheels and we balance everything, we baffle the pans, and we, they're really a zero time engine when we finish with them, even though it's an old unit. Um, and then we, we produce them in another way, uh, we, we produce a 145 horsepower version, which this is. And we do this as a package, we port and polish the heads, we use Formula Ford valves, uh, we, re we rejet and choke the carburetors, um, put a bigger camshaft in. Um, and then at that time, we also changed the wheels and tires. We moved from 14 inch to 15 inch wheels and tires. We used 15 by 7 inch with uh, wider uh, squatter tires, lower profile tires. And that, sorry, that comes as a package that you can request when you order the car. And how much does this car weigh? This car is 1,350 with no people in it but ready to drive. So. What, are, what kind of uh, figures do we get as far as on the track? Uh, well, weight and power ratio? In 0 to 60 in this car with the 145 horse motor geared with a 3.9 rear end, which is the rear end that we put in the four cylinder vehicle, is right, right around uh, 5859, depending on how you can hook it up. Um, of course, when you have a car this light, when you try an energetic start, it, um, it really wants to spin the tires. So if you can be very careful and keep the tires on the track, you can, you can obtain a, a 5.8, 5.9 figure to 60.
top speed on the car is um, probably about 108 and the reason for that is is that they're not aerodynamic at all especially with this car with the long clamshell fenders um, they're like a brick they, they just stop the wind now we do do another version with cycle fenders the old-fashioned wrap-around cycle fenders which the V8 has and they're a little bit more aerodynamic but the, the, the whole reason the cars don't have a top speed really is because of the, uh, of the shape. Well, this car doesn't look like it's uh, strictly for racing. It looks like you could take it out and uh, have fun with it on the street too. And there is, uh, looks like a little uh, area back here for, for luggage, small <laughs> there, area. There is a tiny area for luggage, yeah. You can actually get these side screens in there. You can fold them into two. You can fold up the soft top. And, and put it all back there and you just have enough room for a bottle of wine and a toothbrush after that that's and so, that's right and so yeah these cars are street legal in every state and um, people buy them to just have fun and have the, the true sense of a sports car because the, of the handling the handling of these cars is, is where it's at um, we all talk about power but these cars handle tremendously well they pull almost 1g in the corners with regular road tires and so you can obtain extremely high cornering speeds with them and when you can do that based with the open air and lots of power they become wonderful to drive around the country roads and that's where people that's what people buy them for. People have to remember back when they were kids and drove those go-karts. <laughs> that's right it's the feeling you're so very low you can touch the floor with your hands of course from the driving position and so you're very low in the car and it gives you the sensation of speed even when you're standing still. So when you're doing 50 miles an hour, it really feels quick. Now, would it be rude for me to ask uh, what a car like this runs? Oh, no, not at all. Um, this car in finished form, um, again, in two ways. In the basic form is 24,500. And that's a turnkey finished vehicle, ready to drive, registered for the road. Uh, in the upgrade package, which includes the higher output engine and the wheel package is in a further $1,800. This one got the wheel package? Yeah, this has got the wheel package and the higher output engine, yes. Now, what, what kind of wheels are these? Uh, these are a domestic wheel, actually. They're uh, a wheel that we buy in Southern California. They're a 15 by 7 wheel, and we use them with Toyo tires. We have a tie with Toyo tires. They like to supply us tires for these, so it's, and they really, really well on the car. So um, that's how we do that package. The, um, this car has the 11 gallon fuel tank, uh, which is the long range one, the standard one being 7 gallons. Uh, this car has the sports seats, which have uh, the built in head restraint and the lateral sideways restraint. And uh, also, the, obviously, the package of the uh, wheels and tyres and higher output engine. Now, mileage, uh, you're probably looking at pretty good mileage on a car like this, right? Since it's so light. Well, it is. It's, uh, again, people who buy these cars really don't worry too much, but um, you're probably looking at 55 miles an hour at about 22 miles to the gallon. This car does have dual Webers, dual side draft Webers, so that's a lot of carburation for a small motor. And that, of course, is where we get our power from. So that's what we do with that. But the, uh, if you start driving it quickly, you'll probably only get 15 to the gallon, to be perfectly honest. Now, how's the gearing on this car, and uh, how is it four-speed? Uh, no, this particular car, and in fact, all our cars have five speeds. We, we upgraded them to a, a five-speed overdrive situation. Um, a little bit more comfortable. Um, drops the gearing down. The fifth gear is 0.8 to 1. And the rear end of the car is very unusual for a car this small. It's a fully independent rear suspension. Uh, the original cars had a live axle, like a, like a cart, with, with cart springs. This car, in fact, has uh, a centrally mounted differential unit um, with open drive shafts and uh, an upper and lower link system on the suspension with coilover shock absorbers. And the whole rear end and the whole geometry of the car is adjustable for camber and tow. And so the, the racers like it because they can literally arrive at a, an autocross or a solo one. Um, or even a vintage race meeting and uh, screw the shock absorbers up and go racing. So it really works well. These cars are vintage uh, approved? In certain areas. Uh, some of the more correct groups, uh, like the Monterey Historics and some of the other groups like that, will not let them go. 
because they're obviously a new car. However, some of the more lenient groups recognize the fact that the engine's old and they're an old design and rather classic and they let them go. So it depends on the group that you run with. Some do, some don't. Collector Cars is brought to you by Introducing the new Exide Orbital Maintenance Free Battery. The Exide Orbital has been dropped, dragged, and drilled to prove it's tough enough for anything and perfect for your collector car. The new Exide Orbital Battery. Kimberly Clark, makers of NOAA and now new Dustop Soft as Flannel Fabric. Dustop is the newest fabric from Kimberly Clark featuring incredible softness and breathability, plus four layers of protection for your pride and joy. Noah and new desktop car covers from Kimberly Clark. Rare parts of Stockton, California. Rare parts supply suspension parts for all vehicles from 1930 to current year models. Specializing in collector car suspension and small run manufacturing. Rare parts available through jobbers and repair and restoration shops across the country. The world of collector cars is funded in part by Steel Rubber Products. Steel Rubber Products, manufacturing weather stripping and molded rubber parts for Chrysler Corporation, Packard, Independence, and General Motors Cars and Trucks. Steel Rubber Products, making parts for fellow hobbyists for nearly 30 years. Gotcha, gotcha.